All right, guys, part two for the quest for the best IEMs for competitive gaming. Just to give anybody who is new to the channel a little bit of my background, I have never really gotten into IEMs. I have always used over-the-ear headphones, audiophile grade uh, headphones for competitive purposes in gaming. Way back in the late 90s, early 2000s, I was a professional CS player that played uh, from 1.3 to 1.6 in Cal Invite. And personally speaking, I... Uh, at the time was using a Sound Blaster card, which a lot of people were using in the professional scene. Uh, Sound Blaster sound cards were a popular thing back then. Kind of not so much now that there are so many options as far as external DACs and amps. And I was using a studio grade Sony headphone at the time. And I felt that the competitive advantage was so astronomical then. And I think it's astronomical now. You need to have I think one of the most important things to take your gaming to the next level is to be able to pinpoint and have good sound accuracy and imaging in game and localization so that you're not putting your crosshair in an area that isn't dead point accurate. And that is what good sound provides. I think it's just as important as having a good main mouse. I think it's just as important as having a good main monitor. But to get into the uh, video, I do want to start with showing you guys a little montage from Apex. This is going to be clips that were all taken with my current uh, personal choice and main, the Dunu Studio SA6. Let's check it out. We all know that Apex does have its flaws when it comes to certain audio cues, but the importance of having good audio in a game like Apex is pivotal in my personal opinion. It's all about a game of checks and balances, when you should peak, when you need to take cover and recover. It's all about micromanaging your health, and with poor micromanagement, you will not be successful in a game like Apex Legends. Having a good audio setup is absolutely pivotal, in my opinion, to being able to know when to peak shoot or when you need to get the hell out of a bad situation and play your life, especially in ranked games when RP is on the line. I think having a good setup improves crosshair placement, knowing when enemies are approaching, when you have time to heal, when you have time to reload, and when you absolutely need to shoot. I would say that the first IEM that really made me see that IEMs could be a huge factor for competitive purposes in gaming are the Blessing 2s. First and foremost, the unboxing experience with the Blessing 2s and Moondrop products in general are extremely high quality and just are awesome. I love the artwork, I love the carrying case, and everything that you get in terms of the necessities with the IEMs. As far as the build quality on the Blessing 2s, I think the CNC stainless steel faceplates are absolutely beautiful and very, very well done and tasteful. 
and the 3D uh, resin shell is absolutely awesome. I think it just looks stellar to be able to see all of the internals of the IEM. I think it is a very, very cool look and something that um, I personally would definitely rock either at the office, at the gym, or wherever it may be that I am choosing to listen to uh, music with a beautiful sounding IEM. Now, as far as sound quality for gaming purposes, that is going to be the main purpose of the video, but I will be adding these to the Wallhack IEM tier list. These are absolutely phenomenal for providing a very, very clean bass and sub bass, as well as providing absolutely phenomenal mids and highs. The treble, there, I did not notice any sibilance in game. I thought that the music was absolutely beautiful for being able to pinpoint vocals as well as instrumentation uh, and being able to have a very adequate spatialization with soundstage as well as imaging. I did not find these to be as intimate as something with a very, very close soundstage. I thought the soundstage for gaming purposes was absolutely phenomenal kind of similar to the IE300s by Sennheiser, but they are not as bass heavy. And when loud audio cues are going off in game, you are able to pinpoint those different audio cues with the Blessing 2s. So to be able to have that clean bass, sub bass area on the tonality, and then to be able to have the very absolutely amazing mids and highs with a very good spatialization and the ability to pinpoint different audio cues, these are absolutely phenomenal. Almost remind me of how I felt when I first tried the HD 560s. Of course, not going to provide as expansive of a soundstage as uh, over-the-ear headphones like the 560s, but pretty damn close and close enough for me to actually want to main these for competitive gaming purposes. I think if anybody is into IEMs and you are in that price range of around $320, the Blessing 2s would probably be my number one recommendation to you. The next IEM that I will be adding to the Wallhack IEM tier list is the Dunu Studio SA6. I think the build quality of these is absolutely beautiful with that UV acrylic resin shell that is see-through. I love being able to see the internals. I love being able to see the drivers, the wiring, the configuration. I think it's just an awesome look, kind of like the Blessing 2s, uh, but definitely a little bit more intriguing with the Dunu Studio SA6. And the faceplate is a high grade stabilized wood and my understanding is each one of the Dunu Studio SA6 uh, IEMs is handmade and each of the faceplates that are sold are unique so you don't know what faceplate you are going to get when you are ordering the IEMs and I think that's very unique in the sense that you are the only person who is going to have that specific configuration with that faceplate I think that's one of the coolest things about the Dunu Studio SA6 it's just very intriguing and unique uh, to have one of a kind faceplate for each of the units sold. As far as the comfort, I definitely find these a little bit more comfortable than the Blessing 2s, but the Blessing 2s were very comfortable as well. As far as the unboxing experience, like the Blessing 2s, as well as a lot of Moondrop offerings, the unboxing experience was absolutely beautiful. Get a nice carrying case, and the cable that does come with these is far superior than a lot of the cables that I have received with my Moondrop offerings, with the ability to interchange the connector from a 2.5, 3.5, and 4.4, and the cable, honestly, if I was looking at a cable like this on the market, I would think that I'd be at least spending probably $80 to $100. So although the headphones, the IEMs are in that $540 range, you are getting a lot uh, with the headphones. And as far as the audio quality for music, I would definitely agree that these are a mid-level reference IEM. I thought the mids and the highs were absolutely phenomenal. The bass on these is a little bit elevated over the Blessing 2s, and that's why I am personally going to pick these as my own personal daily driver, because although the bass is a little bit elevated, you get a little bit more oomph, you get a little bit more fun, and the audio quality in general is a little bit superior to the Blessing 2s. I, it, it didn't drown out anything in game. I was still able to pick up everybody in a 360 degree radius. I was able to have perfect crosshair placement in my personal opinion. Hearing those sound cues of footsteps and tag shooters behind walls. And for Apex Legends, I was able to pick up height uh, as well as anybody below me. I was able to pick out distance with ease. Now, they're not as broad and expansive as something like the HD 560s from Sennheiser, but they're so damn close and so comfortable compared to over-the-ear headphones that I would definitely be able to see myself using these every day over a over-the-ear headphone like the DT900 Pro X or the Sennheiser HD 560s. Again, the uh, mids and the highs are absolutely so well perfected on this headphone that I am able to pick out instrumentation and different 
uh, things while and vocals uh, while instrumentation and heavy drums are going off in music. I thought that the sound separation in game was absolutely phenomenal as well as music. And putting these on for the first time, I almost had an experience like when I first put on the DT 1990s. You know, you listen to music and you're just really blown away at how good music sounds with the Studio SA6. And that's one of the beautiful things now with IEMs. Again, you can take these for music listening purposes to the gym or wherever it is that you're going, as well as use these for gaming purposes, especially at a competitive level. So the Studio SA6, as far as build quality with that UV acrylic resin shell that is see-through and looks absolutely phenomenal, those high-grade stabilized wood faceplates that are unique to each unit, and the overall unboxing experience, what you get and how good they are for gaming purposes. These are definitely going to be my daily driver and something that I would highly recommend to anybody looking for a competitive gaming IEM if you are willing to get up to that price point of within the five to $600 range. And the Duno SA6 also has the ability to change to a basier mode. I also noticed that this actually does perform quite well in game. I didn't think that it was too, too bass heavy. Just added a little bit of extra immersion. I actually do like both modes, but would use the default mode for competitive purposes. Now, again, I do want to stress the fact that you can have an absolutely very, very good and adequate gaming experience with particular headphones and IEMs that do not break the bank. The Tonch Gym OLAs are definitely a perfect example of that. Well, not quite as good as the Dunu SA6 as well as the Blessing 2s. I did find these to be so damn close that it's actually scary, especially because of the fact that these are $39.99. Now, the audio quality for music, you're definitely going to be missing a lot of the audio quality from the Blessing 2s as well as the Dunu SA6. These do have one dynamic driver per side that were developed by Tonch Gym. And the interesting thing about these is that these actually are advertised as following the HRTF frequency curve. And a lot of you are probably familiar with HRTF from Valorant as one of the settings for audio, but it stands for Head Related Transfer Function, which follows a frequency curve that is supposed to have a very balanced bass, as well as be able to pick up those sound cues more of footsteps and things that you are intended to hear for good competitive purposes in gaming. Now, the build quality of these is definitely not something that feels anywhere near a Blessing 2 or a Dunu SA6, but the build quality is fantastic, especially for $40. They do have a aluminum casing and the side is see-through, so you are able to see that dynamic driver uh, that Tanshim did create within the IEMs themselves on each side. Now, these are, again, one dynamic driver per side. These are not hybrids like the Dunu SA6, which has six armatures in each side. And these are not like the Blessing 2s uh, in that regard as with a dynamic as well as balanced armatures in each side. <clears throat> now, the for $40... I find this listening experience in music to, to be absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I would be shocked if I put these on somebody's blind, uh, somebody's head as a blind test and you told me that these were under $100. Um, they are really that good as far as a audio listening experience. Now, for gaming purposes, I found these to be incredibly good. And for $40, I would highly recommend these if you cannot go above that within your budget. The only issue I had personally with these in game is that in a 360 degree radius in tax shooters, if a enemy was at 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock or one o'clock, two o'clock in front of me, it became a little bit blurry as far as being able to pinpoint precisely where along that dial they were. Likewise, if somebody was behind me at uh, six, seven or eight or five and four, it became a little bit, um, uh, difficult to pick up and precisely in that little uh, curve. Now, everywhere else, absolutely phenomenal, right? So you really do get a very good sound representation imaging in game. Uh, the sound stage is definitely a little bit close, but again, the tonality of these is so balanced with that decreased bass compared to the Blessing 2s and the Dunu SA6 that it is actually extremely good for gaming purposes. The cable is definitely nothing to write home about, but for $40, that is certainly to be expected. And the cable does come with a built-in microphone. So if you are wanting to take these from gaming purposes to then uh, be able to use them for phone calls or Zoom conferences with your iPhone or tablet, that is something that I do think is particularly good. As far as the unboxing experience, I think the artwork on the box and the unpackaging itself is uh, very clean, very aesthetic. 
Uh, but of course, you do not get a carrying case. You get a little carrying pouch, but again, to be expected for the price point and price of admission. So I do want to stress, do you need to get a Blessing 2 or a Dunu SA6 if you want to have a very good gaming experience? You certainly do not. These are extremely exceptional, not only in Valorant, but in Apex Legends as well. I would not put these on the Wallhack tier list, but again, other than that slight issue, these were absolutely phenomenal. So if you are on a budget, check out the Tanshim Olays. So guys, that is it for the second portion of the quest for finding the best competitive IEMs for competitive gaming. The Dunu Studio SA6 is going to be my personal daily driver moving into the future and is definitely going to be my reference IEM for the future test. The Blessing 2s are absolutely phenomenal as well and certainly will have a spot on the Wallhack tier list. If you guys are interested in looking at graphs between the two, you can go to headphones.com. Those guys are great and they have graphs showing that the Moondrop Blessing 2 has a little bit more of a V-shaped sound moving from the bass to low mids to mids. And the Dunu SA6 has a bit more of a U-shaped sound. Both are absolutely great for gaming purposes, but again, the Dunu Studio SA6 is a little bit heavier on the sub bass and bass. If you are looking for a little bit cleaner of a headphone for competitive gaming purposes, again, the Blessing 2 uh, cuts that down just a tad. But all three of these are absolutely phenomenal. The Tanchim OLAs are extremely impressive for $40 and definitely recommendable for competitive gaming purposes on a budget. I hope that helped, guys. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.